Greeting friends. Hello, welcome to my channel to another episode. Uh, my name is Kathleen and uh, I'm coming to you from the United Kingdom. Welcome back to any returning viewers, any of my viewers that know me, any of my subscribers, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in and spending this Saturday morning with me. Uh, and welcome to any new viewers that are just tuning in. Uh, my name is Kathleen, coming to you from the United Kingdom and this is primarily a knitting channel where I indulge into all my knitting in front of a camera um, where I talk about my projects, my works in progress and my uh, experiences with knitting, my whole journey. Um, yes, my passion is knitting so uh, yes, uh, that's that. That's it. Uh, I believe this is episode six. It's been a little while. Uh, life has been really busy, and you might be able to hear I'm still nasal. So I've been. Uh, I've I was ill for quite a long time. I was ill for more or less one month. I had a really bad flu, and I was completely wiped out. So yeah, I was really ill, um, which which was horrible, I couldn't do anything, I was more or less bed bound and I'm still, excuse me, excuse my, my voice, I'm still nasal now, I'm still not fully there I've tested for Covid, it wasn't Covid, it was just a really bad viral infection couldn't go to work, couldn't do much knitting so yeah, so that's, that's the life update really, the life has been extremely hard and busy to tell you the truth but anyway, let's get back to positive things what am I drinking today? I am drinking uh, a lovely peppermint tea out of my daughter's Elsa mug, <laughs> which I stole. So I'm just going to take a sip now. Please get yourself a, a drink, a hot drink, a coffee, a tea, a beverage, anything that you like. And settle in. We have quite a bit to talk about today. Oh, peppermint tea is so calming, it's so nice. Well, any hot tea, any hot, hot drink is very calming. So let's get into our knitting. I hope I didn't forget to mention anything. I'm actually really excited about this episode today because as a heads up, and I will talk to you about that later, I dipped my toes into sewing. So that's why I'm really excited to, ooh, I just feel I'm not centered. I think I'm centered now. Is that better? Yes. So I, I dipped my toes into sewing. I'm really excited to tell you all about it. But first up, shall we get into the knitting? I'm so excited, yay! <laughs> right, what am I wearing? I'm just gonna stand up first and show you. So I am wearing Oh, I just forgot the name of the pattern now. Um, I shall link it all below in the description and also on the screen. I will put the name of the pattern. This is a free pattern. I do not remember the name of the pattern, sorry. And I do not remember the name of the designer. It is a free pattern. You can find it easily on Ravelry. I'll link it below. And it's a, uh, as you can see, an open cardigan. Uh, which is Rucklin construction. You start at the top, you knit the ribbing and then you can see that you do the Rucklin increases with bind overs which are decorative. I really love that look. So it is knit uh, top down as I mentioned. It's a very simple construction. Once you finish with the knitting you then go back and you add the button band. And uh, it, I've done mine in half, uh, half length sleeve, which I really like, uh, because then it's, it's a perfect garment for me for the autumn, when you're still kind of warm, it's in between, but, uh, but it's getting cold as well, so you want to throw something on quickly, and it's a perfect layering piece. And I just love the color, I love the look of it, and I feel with this, it's like, um, it's it's a bang for your for for your, for your buck really I find because it's such a sim simplistic uh, design and style but it's still in my eyes it looks very it looks elegant to me um, because of the, the the open fronts 
you can wear anything you know and underneath and I just think it looks really really pretty um, so yeah uh, I've knitted this in um, lion brand woolies which is a wool acrylic blend the acrylic content is not much um, probably 80% wool um, woolies they are affordable um, commercial uh, yarn brand they're, they're quite good yeah lion brand woolies so yeah I love this garment I wear it so often and it's it's I mean it's beginner friendly for any of you who want to get into knitting it's very beginner friendly uh, because you just have to know really how to knit and purl and to do yarn overs and that's basically it you don't need any other techniques for that so that is what I'm wearing and I'm just going to get another sip of my tea now yeah so let's move on to our quick show and tell section um, so I've been wanting to show you guys this beauty so I have knitted this uh, many many years ago I think my eldest must have been um, a toddler at the time and uh, so I, so this is Fair Isle, Knit in Fair Isle, and I chose the color way, the color seal myself, and I used scrap yarn for that, I remember. So I only had, a, I only had certain colors available, and so I put them together in this design. And I believe the stitch pattern here, the actual design, I got out from a stitch gallery from from I've got a, a knitting basics book and it has a really nice stitch gallery at the back of it so I just grabbed these designs and I chose the color myself and I think I found the dress on Ravelry so this is basically not a dress for myself because it would be too small it's a dress for my um for my, for my daughter and uh, she wore it uh, quite a few times so as you can see the colors I have here in at, at the front I added them as stripes here uh, below. So yeah, it's a lovely dress, fair isle, and it's a uh, wool yarn. So yeah, uh, at the time I was very proud of it, and yeah, I quite like it. I have to see, uh, try it on my youngest now and see if it fits her. It probably will. So that's the show and tell. Uh, as I use scraps, I can't tell you what yarn I've used, sorry. <laughs> so I'm actually getting a bit hot, so I will take this off now, uh, because I am wearing this is wool and uh, I, I do get quite warm in wool, I must admit. <laughs> so we'll throw that over there. So next up is my shall we do finished objects. Um, so uh, last time I believe I was knitting the, I think it was in the last episode where I had finished the watch cup hat for myself and I just pop it on. Uh, so I had finished that in the last episode and I believe, uh, I already mentioned then, that I'm planning to knit matching hats for my girls. So this is my uh, finished object, uh, my first finished object, object for today. <clears throat> so this is uh, the watch cap hat for my youngest, uh, for, so we have a four-year-old and, and an eight-year-old now. Her birthday was in September. So yes, I'm planning to uh, knit matching hats. So this is for my four-year-old and with my size, because what it is with the watch cup hat, it doesn't actually, it's not a good fit, it's too large if you stick to the to the number of stitches that the pattern calls for. I think the the toddler size have, has you use 120 stitches <clears throat> and so for me it was way too large. So what I've done for my youngest, obviously if I had used 120 stitches for my youngest it would have been also way too big for her. So I only used 80 stitches, yes, 80 stitches, and it fits her perfectly. So now I have two watch cup hats, <laughs> and uh, I think it's going to be super cute um, with my girls and I, us wearing uh, matching hats. We shall see how that turns out. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so that's my first finished object. object. And whilst we're talking of the watch cup hats, um, in between I want to quickly show you this work in progress. So uh, as I said, we have two daughters and so obviously I cannot leave out my, my eldest. So this is, let's do a count, 
watch card part number one, <laughs> watch card part number two for my youngest, and this will be watch card part number three for my eldest. So this is my work in progress. I've got my uh, end protectors here, my needle protectors. I just popped that off. So yes, so that's my work in progress at the moment. It's all around, you do two by two whipping and I'm knitting it or in I'm knitting it with Sirda Horwok Tweet it's called. I can link it below. So yes, I'm knitting this for my eldest now. So that's one of my works in progress and I'm hoping to have that one finished soon as the colder weather is coming. So yes, I'm just gonna put these stoppers on. I'm knitting uh, my huts on my Jago Shorties, the blue version, which goes up to 5mm. So this allows you to knit uh, with a small circumference, so you can just knit in the round and around and around, instead of using double pointed needles. I feel like I'm whizzing through today. Um, so yeah, my watch cards. Funny actually, I watched uh, Inga yesterday, Knitting Traditions Inga's la last episode, and she also uh, is knitting many watch cards. And she mentioned the same problem with the size as well, that the, the sizing in the pattern is, is, is too large. So yeah, she is knitting them at, um, at the moment as well. She lost that pattern too. Um, I feel really nasal, I, apolog I apologize, I'm still ill. A little bit. So yes, let's move on, shall we? Um, yes, next finished ob object uh, and you returning viewers, you know this one because it has uh, made quite a few appearances over the last few episodes. So this turned out to be a bigger project than I had anticipated. Um, so uh, I, I don't know what happened. I think I lost my motivation a little bit in between and now I must admit that even though it is done, I still not have not woven in the ends and I s obviously I still have not blocked it. But, 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 the plan is to do that this weekend. I will block it. I will weave in the ends, block it and then I'm going to insert a clip here into this video. It's going to be a a future me, <laughs> I'm going to insert a clip with it blocked and me wearing it so I c you can see what it looks like. So yes, returning, uh, my, my throat is so dry, sorry, I'm going to grab another drink now. Apologies, um, I just really wanted to record today because I feel I have not recorded in a long time and I, I didn't want to let my current subscribers down and you know, feel like, oh, is she not, is she not podcasting anymore? Where is Kathleen gone? So I really wanted to record today, even though I'm not feeling up to it. So yes, so you returning viewers, you know this, it is finally finished. Ta-da! Yes, there we go. So this is the puff tea. And as I said, um, you will get a better picture with the clip I will insert, with me wearing it. So this is the puff tea, it is knit. Top down, I'm just going to hold it up one more time. I have knitted the sleeves. Uh, there. So I matched the bottom ribbing uh, and, the, and, the, and the cuffs of the sleeve, I matched them. Uh, so it has basically a very long, long one by one whip. And at the bottom as well. So this is an in interesting construction because it has um, a subtle sleeve, uh, which is different to the to the standard Rucklin shaping. So yeah, so with this project, um, it was kind of a love and in the end probably a bit of a hate relationship, because I mean I love the yarn; it's very rustic and scratchy and warm. But I'm a bit worried that I'm, I hope I will not be too warm in it. And then I saw all these other lovely versions on Instagram uh, where they just used, they, they, they stuck to the, to the open gauge because this garment uh, meant to have an open gauge and I actually altered the gauge. So my gauge is denser than the pattern calls for. I think I did 24 stitches per 10 centimeters. 
the cut the pattern I think only called for maybe 20 stitches which makes it which makes it looser and so lovely uh, projects on Instagram they, they they use this lovely mohair yarn and then it's a very light airy garment which doesn't make you uh, too warm so I opted for quite um, a warm winter sweater and so because I've used um, a very warm yarn I obviously had to make the sleeves long the pattern actually calls for short sleeves um, you've got the puff sleeves here and then short uh, yes I will link it all below so you can have a look overall though it is a lovely lovely pattern it is very I, th I find I found it intuitive and easy <coughs> excuse me it was intuitive and easy and yeah I've knitted it in the Rowan felted tweed yarn which is really nice as well and I hope it will soften up after washing so this is my finished object and I think I am going to wear it when it is very cold so yeah I'm glad I've done it now so yes it is done uh, I've knitted it um, uh, with my I always actually knit with Chago needles they are for me the best needles on the market I've tried quite a few um, and I tend to always just uh, uh, grab my, my Chago needles um, so yeah so yes let's come uh, let's 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 go to our next finished object and this is the exciting one for today so this is actually my first sewing project um, a finished object um, for any of you sewers out there you know sewing is a lot qu quicker a lot 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 quicker I mean I'm I have literally no sewing experience and I whipped up this bag uh, <coughs> uh, in, in one hour so but anyway before I get ahead of myself let me tell you how this how this all came about so I went to the knitting and stitching show last weekend this is a, as the name says a knitting and stitching show in London and uh, I had been before many years ago, many years ago, before my kids were born. And so I really felt like I wanted to treat myself this year, I'm going there. So I went there last weekend, I bought the tickets ages ago. I still struggled with my, with my cold, um, but it was coming to an end anyway, so I just had to go. Because it's only once a year. And so when I booked the tickets, I, I, I wanted to um, attend a workshop again. Because when I went before to the knitting and stitching show, I attended a, a knitting uh, workshop because I was new to knitting at the time. So now this time, um, I'm, as, I'm, as, I'm, as I am an experienced knitter, there's no point me attending a knitting workshop. So I thought for the fun of it, let me sign up to a sewing workshop and see what sewing is all about. So I had never sat on a sewing machine and I had never ever uh, sewed in, in, in my life before. And I, I was really, uh, not so much worried, but I was thinking that's going to be a total car crash. Because the workshop actually says intermediate and basic sewing machine skills required, which I didn't have. Um, so I even thought, oh gosh, maybe that's a mistake, I shouldn't have signed up for this workshop. They're going to tell me to get out of here, you don't have any experience whatsoever, so please get out of here. That's what I thought they are going to say. But no, uh, they didn't. <clears throat> so yeah, so I went to the knitting and stitching show and I really enjoyed myself. There's loads of, um, there's loads of indie dyers there, loads of, loads of brands and small companies and businesses selling their products there. So you can buy anything there. And it's, there's, it's, there's lots of exhibitions there as well. Exhibitions of, 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 of crafty projects. And um, I'm going to insert uh, footage of it. So I've, I've done a bit of filming, so you see what it's all about. It was in North London. Um, so yeah, so it was a, a big, it's a big place. Um, and I don't think I saw all of it. I was there for the whole day. And um, so, so yeah, they have exhibitions, uh, lots of textiles, fabrics to buy, everything crafts, cra cra any, anything craft, crafts related really. Um, so I bought uh, some yarn, as you would do when you go to the knitting and stitching show. You cannot come home without yarn. And so yeah, lots of sewing related stuff there, quilting, 
excuse me, quilting, so you name it, um, big, big, big show. Uh, and so yes, I attended a workshop. <clears throat> when I got there, I said to the lady, I have to get another drink, because my throat is giving up on me. <clears throat> so when I went to the, uh, when I went to the, it's a, it was supposed to be a one hour and a half workshop. And when I went there, I was uh, right, uh, right up front, I was very honest, and I said, um, I'm sorry, I don't have any experience. And I saw already that the woman was a bit like, oh, oh, really? You don't have non any any experience? And I said, no. And so she had me sit with uh, with her assistant. Um, I, I, I believe it was her assistant. Um, so not a participant of the show, but her assistant. So I sat with her, and she quickly, before the workshop, she just very briefly explained to me how a sewing machine works. And I didn't have to set up the... The, 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 the thread or anything. I didn't have to set the machine. It was all done for us. So she explained how the sewing machine worked and then when the workshop started um, the, the teacher, um, she then uh, basically just instructed us um, what to do. So let me tell you what it is. It's well, what the workshop it was. So the workshop was called Tote Bag in a Pocket. And um, so in, so to, to cut a long story short, I managed to independently sew um, uh, a tote bag, basically, in just about one hour, or, or one hour and a half it was. And I'm going to show you this tote bag now. So yeah, so she instructed us what to do, because you have to fold, so you have all, all the different fabrics. You have the strings for the bag, you have the, the front and the, the, and the back of the, of, the, of the bag, and then of course you have the pocket as well. So she instructed us um, and just showed us how to fold it and then how to do the stitching. And let me show you my first finished uh, sewing project. Ta-da! So this is the bag open and then there's actually a way you can, this is so cool, there's a way, to, it has a bag inside the bag and you can actually store the bag in the pocket. So it has a pocket in the bag. And I'm going to try now. So please bear with me now. I'm going to try and I'll put this bag inside the pocket. Because I think this is so cool. Let's see if I can do it. Please bear with me. I think I've done it. <clears throat> Ta-da! So you then put the bag inside the pocket. Tote bag in a pocket. And so yes, uh, I have really, I really am amazed myself. Um, as I said, I thought it would be a total car crash. I thought I wouldn't be able to work the sewing machine. But it just worked and uh, and you have to think about what you're doing and you have to kind of you have to control the fabric as as the needle takes it and I mean it's by no excuse me it's by no means perfect you can see the the stitching can you see this you can see the stitching obviously is is far from perfect I mean what do you expect after you know after just uh, one time sewing, but I really, really enjoyed myself. So yes, it is bad sewing, <laughs> but yeah, it was so much fun. And so I've been already now looking into sewing machines, how much they cost. Of course, I don't want to buy just a cheap sewing machine. Um, and then you, you can all, oh gosh, look at this here, look at this. But anyway. So yeah, I'm super proud. Um, so yeah, so I've been looking at sewing machines, and I think I wanna I wanna buy myself a sewing machine, but I I don't wanna just buy any sewing machine, a cheap one, and then and then you have to throw it away after after one year because it's not doing the job anymore. But <coughs> I want, first I wanna attend another uh, workshop um, and and just then really decide whether sewing is for me because 
you know, if you decide to buy a sewing machine, you have to invest a bit of money. As I said, there's no point buying a cheap sewing machine. So I need to first really decide for myself, um, am I going to give sewing um, a, a proper goal? You know, am I going to continue sewing? Otherwise, you know, it's a waste of money. So yes, so I'm going to probably attend another workshop. I'd like to attend a quilting workshop. Quilting you sew as well with a sewing machine, but as far as I understand quilting, you put, it's called wadding. In, so you've got two fabrics, yeah, and inside in the middle, let, like, let, you can imagine it to be a sandwich. Inside you put wadding, which is like a very soft fabric, so it's, uh, it makes it sturdy. And so then you've got the wadding inside, and then you've got the two outer fabrics, and then you sew that, so it's three layers. Then you sew that together, and it's, all, it's also patchwork you can do to make some pretty designs. Um, so you can use different fabrics, and then you can also uh, you can also just use one fabric. So I think quilting would be really interesting, and I think I'm, I'm going to attend a quilting workshop next. But all in good time. Uh, I'm a full time uh, a full time employee. I work I work full time. I'm a full-time mum, I have two jobs, so I'm extremely busy, but I like it that way. And so let's see when the time is right to do this. So yeah, so that's my uh, second, no, my third finished object, sewing object. Let's see what we're going to do next. I think next is going to be, oh, one more thing about the sewing as well. Uh, if you are in a similar uh, position and you feel that you'd like to try sewing, my recommendation is definitely just sign up for a workshop uh, in your local area and just give it a go and see if you like it. You know, you've got nothing to lose. Uh, for beginners, it doesn't cost that much money and you don't need any materials. They provide everything and it's great. You know, life has so much to offer and it's not all about tablets and mobile phones and technology. You know, there's so much more, I think. Um, almost like it's going back to basics for me. And doing this and being creative and doing the things that make that make make me happy. So yeah, I would I would recommend you giving it a go. It's great. Yes. So now we're working on to whips uh, to whips works in progress. All right. So first work in progress. And uh, so actually, <laughs> funny funny enough, there's actually no progress on that. So this so for returning viewers, just a very quick update on my twin flower socks. Just to let you know that there's absolutely no progress since the last episode. However, for new viewers, I just want to quickly mention that I'm working on twin on my twin flower socks. The first one is done and I'm working on the second. If you're interested, go back to previous episodes. But anyway, that's my first work in progress. And it's just on the back burner because at the moment I can't be bothered to knit the lace, sec to knit the lace section. So that's why I'm holding up my hands and say that one has to go in the corner at the moment, in the knitting naughty corner. So that uh, leaves me for number two, which is, uh, which is this guy here. So this uh, work in progress is a summer top, haha, <laughs> a summer top that I'm knitting in the cold weather. A summer top that I'm knitting for my friend. Uh, for her birthday, oh god, sorry, I just pulled, pulled along the yarn, hang on, I have to wind this up again. So I'm knitting the Tip Top Tank, a free pattern that you can find on Ravelry, I will link it all below, that I'm knitting for my friend, and her birthday is in November, so this will be my birthday present for her. Let me just hold this up, I'm just going to throw the yarn on the floor again. I'm not, not sure if you can see this. You know, I'm going to hold it this way. So this is the bottom. This is a split hem here. It has a really nice... I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. Let me start from the beginning. This is the tip top tank and I'm just going to show it up first like that. So it's a summer top with just some straps, no sleeves. It is knit in cotton and linen yarn, and I'm using Drop Spell. And uh, so yeah, this so I've got I did one strop already, so I'm holding it upside down so you can see it better. 
And now let me show you this. It has a split hem, as I mentioned. I feel I'm going so fast today, sorry. I'm a bit under pressure as well to get everything done <clears throat> because my little one went to swimming lessons with, with daddy this morning and when they come back I have to be finished. Always under pressure and stress. It has a, a lovely detail here on the sides, on the sides here, on each side. <clears throat> By just basically having two pearl columns running all the way and they even continue on the sides. So this is the pearl column here running and it's running up all the way here as well along the sides as you decrease. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> and so I still have to finish the right front. Actually, if I hold it up against my body, you'll be able to see it better. So yeah, that is it. So this is the left front and then I just have to knit the right front and the back and then it's done. So yeah, that will be summer top as a birthday present in the winter. Ha <laughs> ha! So yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And it's, it's a bit of a struggle, I must admit, though, to knit with a, with a non-wool uh, fiber in the colder month. Uh, in fact, I don't actually enjoy that much knitting with cotton and linen yarn because it has no give. Wool is stretchy and forgiving and so soft and warm. Uh, however, this it has no give and it feels very hard on the hands. Um, so I have to kind of knit uh, knit in between there. I have to con I have to also knit on my wooly knits in between as it is kind of hard on the hands to knit with. And I'm just going to show you the yarn as well. Drop spell. So yeah, that's that. Ah, yes. And one more thing I wanted to mention about the tip top tongue as well uh, is that I had a bit of a problem with it with my tension. So um, I actually I actually lost um, a week's worth of knitting. I had knitted all the way up to so the, the the body I had knitted already. When I realized that my tension was completely off, um, that the garment was uh, way too large. Um, I mean, way, way too large. So I, I did knit um, a, a, a tension swatch uh, at the beginning and I, I got the right gauge and everything. Uh, but then when I started knitting on it, as I said, I realized, why does this look so big? <clears throat> so then I measured the gauge and I suddenly had too few stitches. Yes, I had too few stitches per 10 centimeters, which makes the garment bigger. So I had to whip back, which I don't like doing, I had to whip back and start afresh uh, with uh, smaller needles to make it smaller. And I asked myself, even though I swatched, why, is, why did that happen? Why, uh, why has my gauge changed? And I think it comes down to two things. Number one is, uh, I tend to knit small gauge swatches. And when you knit a small gauge swatch, you can't really gauge your tension as yet. The knitting has to be established in order to actually measure your gauge correctly. So when you gauge swatch, and you always should for garments, I have to stress that. Uh, when you gauge swatch, make sure you knit it uh, big enough. It has to be at least, I would say, in width 15 centimeters wide, I would recommend, because then it gives you a salvage edge. We always talk about 10 centimeters, but if you make it overall 15 meters, it gives you that salvage edge and uh, some wiggle room. I never bother I never bother with row gauge only with uh, with the stitch gauge. So yeah and so that's number one uh, why why my why my uh, gauge was off and number two probably because when I then knit uh, I then relax into it and my gauge becomes looser I knit more loosely and that's why it ended up bigger. So, so yes, that's my tip-top tongue and I can't wait for this to finish. Okay, so next work in progress. Um, so even though I've got my twin flower socks on the needles, <coughs> I couldn't uh, resist buying some Halloween yarn. Look at this beauty. I love this collar. It reminds me of witches. Um, so, because uh, we have two small children, Halloween is for us kind of a big thing. You know, we decorate a little bit, we go trick-or-treating, 
and we and we go to Halloween parties. For the last two years, we went to kids' Halloween parties, and even I dressed up. I wore a black wig and makeup, and and my kids were dressed up, and it's it's great fun. So I couldn't help myself get ahead of the game because I'm in the Halloween mood already. So I ordered this uh, Halloween yarn, and I cast on. Uh, these Halloween socks. So yes, I couldn't help myself and I cast on these Halloween socks here. So that's what I have. Let me show you this little cute guy. Oh! This is what I love about socks because they are so cute. Uh, this is a, a progress keeper. So actually let me just back up again and just talk about the yarn a bit more before I get ahead of myself. So uh, I ordered this from I ordered this from I think the, uh, called they're called hobby and the yarn came from Denmark and I'm just going to show you the label as well so I got these two hanks here this and this <coughs> and they're both gorgeous Halloween yarns and I'm going to show you the label here in case anybody's interested you can order this on I think they're called hobby and that's what it's called, Halloween Sock Wool from Hobby. And this is 75% uh, wool and 25% polyamide. So polyamide is, uh, is a synthetic um, uh, artificial fiber, uh, so non-animal fiber. <coughs> and I was wondering the other day, what is actually polyamide? What is the difference between nylon and polyamide? So I did a, a quick, I had a quick look in my book, and polyamide is actually the same as nylon. It's just another. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the book said it it's nylon, and they tend to put that into socks a lot because it makes the fabric sturdier uh, and less prone for felting. Because when you wear socks, the yarn essentially gets felted <coughs> because you put pressure and warmth on the sock when you walk. And so it keeps rubbing on your shoes or on the floor. And so that's why you get these holes in socks. Because, so socks have to be hard wearing if you wear them a lot. And the nylon polyamide, it uh, makes it much sturdier and less prone <coughs> for felting, less prone to, to get holes. So I, do, I don't mind a bit of nylon in my socks, but I must admit knitting with it, it feels almost like pl plastic, it feels like plasticky a bit, what's the word? You can feel, you can just feel the difference and it feels unkind to your hands knitting with it. But I'm, I'm but it's, it's okay, I, I'm going to pay that price so that way I'll end up with sturdy socks. So yeah, I've talked about the, the yarn, <clears throat> I'm just knitting plain vanilla socks uh, and I'm just using a standard free vanilla socks pattern. There are quite a few sock patterns out there. And so I actually prefer to knit my socks top, uh, sorry, not top, toe up. So let me show you this little guy. That's why I love knitting socks because it's just so cute. I think it is so cute. So yes, you actually cast on right here. So this is the toe. I'm just going to poke my hands in so you can see. So you cast on here right at the top with... you cast on 30 stitches in total. 15 stitches each on the needle. You cast on right here and the cast on that you use that gives you an invisible seam. The cast on is called Judy's Magic Cast On. It is total. It is seamless basically. There is no seam. This cast on is seamless and it's awesome. If you haven't tried it yet before, I would really recommend giving toe up socks a try because then you. I mean, I have talked about this in the past, so I'm not gonna go over that again, but yeah, toe-up socks are, are much nicer, you can gauge the size much better of your sock and I love the, the toe. So once you've cast on, you then just knit increases on each side 
here and here on every second round. So per round you increase four stitches. And yeah, it's like a self-striping Halloween sock. I've got my progress keeper here that tells me when I finish the toe because from now on, from now on the rounds I'm knitting are variables. So I need to be able to count my rounds so I can match the second sock. <clears throat> and this is my beginning of the round stitch marker, this one. And yeah, that's my Halloween socks, which I'm loving at the moment. I love knitting on small circumference needles, I love knitting on socks. It's so easy and it's a quick project, I love it. So yeah, let's move on to the next work in progress. So the next work in progress and the last work in progress for today uh, is uh, a project that I wanted to cast on for a long time and I oh I'm just gonna get the book as well because uh, there's a book that I showed that there's, there's a book that I showed hang on I want to show you again Elizabeth Zimmermann's Knitter's Almanach. I'm a big fan of Elizabeth Zimmermann. And, yes, without further ado, I am finally knitting the pie shawl. So excited because this was uh, one of my dream knits uh, for, for a long time. I've been wanting to knit this for, for quite a while. So... No, just joking. It's going to be a round shawl. So uh, unfortunately my, so these cords I'm using here are the Knitter's Barber cords, I believe they're called. And at the moment they're a bit too short. That's why I can't actually stretch out the shawl. But um, so basically, this is the pie shawl. And um, it's actually a universal pattern, which means that you can find the instructions online, on YouTube or on, on Google. And the way this has worked, so uh, I'm just going to try and stretch it out in one place. I mean, for any lace knitters out there, you know that once the lace uh, project is finished, you block it out, you stretch it out, and that's when all the beauty comes out. You will see all the lace, all the little holes, which, adds the, which, which basically adds the beauty. <clears throat> At the moment, it doesn't look like much, but once I'm, I'm, intending, I'm intending to knit this, uh, humongous. I want this shawl to be big. I want it so big that if I fold it in half, it's round, round shawl. If I fold it in half, I will still be able to uh, throw it around my around my neck and my shoulders. And I have the yarn for it as well, so I can keep going until I'm out of yarn or until I'm sick of it. And I'm going to just stretch it out to show you the beauty of it. So once you block there, you wash it, you block it, and then this gorgeous pattern will emerge. And so now to the construction. The pie shawl is basically, you start, is, is, it works, it goes like this. You start with nine stitches in the very center. You knit, uh, so you have to start with double pointed needles, double pointed needles, which is a bit of a struggle. Uh, I, it took me three attempts to to actually get going. So I had to whip out and then start again. When you have very few stitches on three needles, the needles the needles and the and the yarn get twisted, you don't know what stitch you would be you have to knit into uh, next. So it's quite it's a bit the beginning is tricky I must admit and it took me three attempts. Uh, so yeah, so you knit. You start with nine stitches on on three double pointed needles. You knit around. <coughs> yes, you knit one round, and then you increase the increase round. On the increase round, you double your number of stitches. So where you had nine, you end up with eighteen stitches after this increase round. So then you knit a number of rounds. Uh, I believe it was. Hang on. <coughs> I can tell you. Yeah, so then you knit three plain rounds and then on the next round you once again double the number of stitches in the one round by doing yarn overs all around. In one round you double the number of stitches. 
you come from 18 stitches to I believe 36 stitches is that right yeah so you always in the increase round you double the number of stitches so then uh, after the increase round you knit uh, 12 plain knit rounds so basically each time you increase the width of the plain knitting rounds as you can see you start with a very small circumference then the next circumference the next number of uh, plain knit rounds gets doubled then after the increase round which is here again you double the plain knit rounds and then once again you knit an increase round and you can see the yarn overs here this section here this gray white collar I knitted 24 plain increase rounds and so with each increase round <coughs> you double the number of stitches very easy by doing yarn overs all around then again you double the width of the previous plain knit rounds and this gives you a perfect round shawl and uh, yeah it's going to it's going to look amazing I think um, so what I so about the yarn as well so I'm knitting this with the wooly knit uh, British wool uh, cone and I love this yarn because it is 100% wool it is of course non superwash and it is so rustic it is oh it I mean at the moment it feels a bit uh, scratchy but after washing and wearing it will soften up and what I, I think what I love the most is the hairiness of it I'm not sure if it will come out on camera uh, I think you can see it a little bit yes it's an it's an extremely hairy yarn which is obviously the hair from the sheep obviously uh, and I just I just love it <coughs> my voice is still so bad I'm sorry and look at this gorgeous color there's some dark specks in it as well it probably doesn't show up on camera and so yes it's going to be a humongous shawl and it's going to be it's going to keep me so warm around my neck in the winter look at this oh I just love it it's gorgeous I'm going to show you the yarn <coughs> So yeah, these are the two colors that I'm using. The um, this is the harvest colorway, and this is the I can tell you. This is British wool cone light gray natural, 500 gram. They're both 500 gram, and so I'm knitting this as part of the uh, knitting. Uh, sorry. I'm knitting this as part of the Wooly Knit Knitting Traditions call and the hashtag is hashtag WKXKT yes uh, Wooly Knit and uh, Inga Knitting Traditions they are doing a collaboration to celebrate British wool and so uh, what better to knit <coughs> than um, a pie shop so yes, this, this is all the knitting that I've been doing, my, my finished projects, um, my sewing adventure, my works in progress, life updates. Uh, yes, my, my two girls are, uh, are both going to school now, so I'm very busy with supporting them with homework and learning and things like that and work and everything. Always busy, busy, busy bunnies we are. So I'm just going to quickly show you as well what I bought at the knitting and stitching show uh, before this episode comes to a close. So when I was there at, uh, at the knitting and stitching show, I was so excited to be buying some new yarn. And I realized that actually the yarns that I have at home are nicer than the ones that I saw there. Uh, I think it's because I have such a big stash, I must admit. And so um, there, there wasn't anything there that I don't that that I haven't already seen, if that makes sense. So I found it hard to find a yarn that really wowed me. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But I did, uh, I did fall in love with two yarns. So I bought this beauty. So just to make clear, I bought this at the knitting and stitching show, okay? I will link, link it all below. 
So this is called Debonair and uh, two reasons I bought this. First one is I have actually never knitted with yuck, with a yuck blended yarn before and I believe this is what makes it so soft. I mean if you could just feel this now, it is unbelievably soft. Uh, so this has I believe 65% superwash merino, 20% silk uh, and some, I, I can't see the number here, and some yuck content. This is lace weight yarn and it gives you, wow, 800 meters. And this is called burnished gold. And I'm thinking because I bought four of those, I'm thinking that I could hold this double and to knit a, per, um, a beautiful shawl, or maybe even holding this double, I could knit the ranunculus, uh, which would look very beautiful. <clears throat> and so yeah, it's, uh, the other reason why I bought it as well is I fell in love with the golden collar. It's a caramel golden collar, and I think it's very, very pretty. <clears throat> I love it. Excuse me, my throat, I'm sorry. So yeah, I bought four of those. Um, and then I bought uh, some uh, silk mohair as well. I bought this one. Dinah's Home of Crafts, I think. Dinah's Home of Crafts. And this is, uh, the colorway is called Pure Gold. At the moment in this lighting it looks orange, but I think it's so gorgeous as well. I don't know yet what I can knit with it though. Uh, yes, Kit Mohair 72% at 28% silk. And yeah, I think it's gorgeous. I bought two of those. So yeah, <clears throat> so they were already quite expensive. So uh, as I said, I didn't see anything and I didn't just want to buy yarn for the sake of buying yarn. Uh, and then another um, yarn purchase that I, that I made not at the knitting and stitching show, but online is uh, this little guy here. I, call, I, I bought Tilia Filcolana in this sage color. And I think it's such a nice color. I only bought one door just to test the color for now. So yeah, so that's that. <clears throat> and then last, what I wanted to show you is these stitch markers that I bought at the Knitting and Stitching show. So I, haven't actually, I have not had such stitch markers or progress keepers, so I thought this is a good opportunity to buy those. They're very pretty. This is uh, the flowers on it. Yeah, flowers, some progress keepers. One is already hanging on my Halloween socks. And then I bought these as well. And I think this is a uh, sun looks like a sunflower to me and then these heart stitch markers as well or I should say progress keepers so yeah <clears throat> that was all um, I wanted to talk to you about today um, it's so exciting I'm so glad that I've done another episode for you now I've been wanting to do one for a long time but yeah oh, life is just too busy um, I talk two more quick things First one is future knits, one. So I'm, I want to knit something for my mum. And uh, so this is long overdue. I've been wanting to knit something for my mum and possibly for my dad as well later on for a long time. But she said that uh, knitted garments don't suit her, uh, don't look, will not look good on her. So I actually suggested to knit her the love note uh, in a lovely green color. The love note has a lace, Yoke. I'm not sure if any of you know it. So I sent her the pictures and she said, oh yeah, it looks beautiful, but I'd rather have a cardigan. And so my, uh, on my plans, on my knitting plans, is basically to knit a lovely, lovely cardigan for my mum. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing that I wanted to um, uh, quickly mention is an interesting fact, a very interesting fact. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I've been listening to um, an uh, audio to to, to an audio uh, book. I forgot the name now. It's a knitting. It's it's an audio book about knitting. And one quick uh, fact before we have to end the episode. Sorry, I'm rushing now. Sorry. Which is basically this. I didn't know that. It was very interesting. So they in 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 war times. I think in the first and second world war, 
the Germans in English, I believe, they had knitting spies. Knitting spies. That is so interesting. What is a knitting spy? And so what they've done basically, they sent encoded messages to 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 to, to the opposites to, to, to the enemies uh, in their knitting. So they would do things like knit a sweater and then leave uh, X amount numbers of yarn overs or pearl bumps or they would leave knots in the yarn. So when you unravel the sweater, they left knots in the yarn and these knots would stand for something. So then they, they then put the yarn unraveled from the sweater. They put the yarn against the wall or something like that uh, and the knots would send them a message. So they were knitting for the for the for the op op opposite well for for I think it was the Germans and the English. So for for the enemy they they would uh, they, they had knitting spies and then they would send the garments, smuggle them into the other uh, in, in, in into in onto the enemy side. Um, and so they yeah they they, they knitted uh, garments and shawls with these messages uh, in them and they obviously they were undetected because and even they use knitting patterns as well I believe because knitting patterns and the language used in knitting patterns is a different language for someone who doesn't know knitting so they included secret messages and I think I found that so interesting knitting spies wow I mean, you have to be obviously very brave to do that because if they caught you, then you would have been in extremely serious trouble. I mean, this was war times. You, I cannot imagine what people must have gone through in those days. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was an interesting fact that I wanted to throw in. So before my little one comes home now from swimming, before the episode gets interrupted, I'm quickly going to say bye now. It was so lovely to catch up with you. Thank you so much for spending this Saturday morning with me. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, thank you so much for all your returning viewers and thank you for tuning in. If you like it, give me the thumbs up. That um, helps the YouTube algorithm to do its work and uh, subscribe as well. That would make me happy. Um, I already have over 300 subscribers, which is so amazing. So thank you so much for all you lovely people, your lovely, lovely knitters and crafters. Um, just, just do what makes you happy. May it be anything. Maybe it's even puzzles. I like puzzles or painting or anything. Just do it because life is too short. To not do what you want, what you love doing, what you want to do is too short. We only have one life. So do what makes you happy. And on that note, have a lovely weekend. Bye. Bye bye.